On this episode of Doing the Most, we're celebrating four years of Doing the Most content, which has been primarily mead. Homemade brews and various artists, everything from mead to rose. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. And to celebrate that occasion, I have a friend here, Faye Woodmead, Yay. from the channel Faye Woodmead. <laughs> uh -huh. I just thought you were in town uh -huh. for Mead Stampede, and nice. I thought it would be fun to taste the mead, the first ever mead that was on the Doing the Most channel. This is an original bottle. I am shocked that you have a bottle that is like four years old hanging out in your house. Yeah, I've, I've got a few back there. Uh, and it's like all the other things from the years are stacked on top of it. So I had to like get my arm around in there and <laughs> get the bottle out. But yeah, I have, I have a few bottles still kicking around of this recipe. Crazy. Yeah. And, uh, and I thought, you know, let's open one up. Some of the comments I got way back in the day from people on this project were like, that's too much oak. You're gonna over oak that. All you're gonna taste is the wood. Oh boy. There was one that was like, I've never transferred a mead so many times in my whole life. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, well, apparently, your problem. apparently I racked it too many times. Oh, um, and you know, this is, this is when I was getting back into trying to make mead. You know, I've been a home brewer for a long time. And I never really liked mead or mead that I had made. And so as I was like, oh, let's start a channel. I thought like, let's get, let's like do it. Let's go all in on making a mead. And so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's some like, you know, some outdated stuff in that video. I'll own it. I, I feel that. I've got that, plenty of that on my <laughs> channel, so. Maybe after four years, this is hot garbage. Uh, we'll see. Here's to four years of YouTube. Cheers. Maybe there will be more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Have you ever heard of cock ale before I mentioned it to you? No. Uh -huh. it's, it's no different than most beers, but it's made with a mashed up rooster in the beer. If you are squeamish, Now's the time to look away. Mm -hmm. Really get in there with it, you know. I'm trying to just get it. Make sure it knows who's boss. <laughs> look at look at how far my shirt. It says like some blades of mace. There's not like specific, so I'm gonna put in like a tablespoon. Again, it smells kind of Christmassy. You gonna eat one? Mm -hmm. That's fun. I'm curious how the uh, blades of mace come through in this. Also, uh, don't eat mace. My palate is ruined right now. Oh yeah? It tastes like I just chewed on like a giant piece of plastic. It's almost like a spiced kombucha. It has fermentation flavor. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting a lot of plastic in the back of my mouth, which is the mace. Blades and mace. Yeah. It's an ingredient. actually remembers what ecto cooler looked like i mean there are pictures on the web but seeing it in person is really the only way to do it justice so in trying to match this it only makes sense to open a three-year-old ecto cooler for ourselves and match it directly to the original product it is about the same level of sweetness as the original ecto cooler however it does have quite a bit more orange flavor backing it up it's much sweeter than I would typically make any of the, the products that I that I brew here. Well, and so I like sweet. Okay. So I'm like, this is okay. Compared to some of your other stuff, I would say this is this is quite sweet, mm -hmm. but I like it. Going back. Oh my gosh, yeah. 
Oh no, they're, mm -hmm. they're quite similar, but this is very, again, orange grown up. So you can hit the subscribe button right here. See, this is an animated graphic that I just, here, hold on, I'll just, there we go. Check it back over here. Pretty cool. That's really dumb. But okay. <laughs> yeah. Here, right here. Oh, oh. oh you got it. Oh. I'm gonna eat it. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> how, many, <laughs> how many calories were in that? Oh. <laughs> so yeah, this is blueberries, lots and lots of honey. This aged on oak and uh, it aged in my basement at the previous house that we were in. We had a, a very cool basement that I was able to oh, take stuff down nice. into. So it sat down there for a while. It smells very red winey. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, the goal behind this recipe back then was to make a blueberry mead that kind of reminded you of a Malbec wine. Yeah. So not like a fruit bomb, not like a jammy thing, but like one where you can taste the blueberry, but you like get that big sense of red wine whininess in there. It's so interesting. Mm-hmm. Very complex smelling. Yeah, it's definitely done a lot of melding in the bottle. It almost has like a, like an oatmeal vibe to me. I don't know why that's like kind of what I'm pulling out is like, like this. Like a grain or? No, like a sweeter. Like those little packets of oatmeal or, yeah. or like Quaker Oats and yeah. mix with some hot water. Okay. Kind of. I mean, I'll own that if that's like a blueberry. It's nice. good. No, because you can get like a blueberry, but there's just this like, maybe it's like a creaminess almost blended with that mm -hmm. like red wine vibe is <laughs> well let's get in there and see things. if it tastes like a bowl of oatmeal <laughs> so in order to put this to the test i wanted to invite anna to come in and do a taste test where I mixed up some lemonade with these three sweeteners. Every one of these has been sweetened up to a gravity of 1.030. There's a chance that some of them contribute to higher gravity without contributing the same amount of sweetness. Oh. See what I, I mean? mean, yeah, and you would assume that is the case. B tastes the best, but I think that's because it's the sweetest. None of them have a bad flavor. None of them have like an off flavor. I have a sour face. It's because I have a sour mouth. <laughs> I think I think A is erythritol theoretically, but that's just made up. Yeah. And then I think C is allulose, but I don't know. So A was erythritol. Yes. B was sugar. Yes. And C was allulose. Yes, I think. I'm telling you that's what they were. For real? I yeah, got it? You nailed it. <gasps> Sulfur is naturally occurring. It's part of a lot of living things. And in a reductive environment, that sulfur can come together and bond with hydrogen, creating hydrogen sulfide. And hydrogen sulfide ends up smelling like rotten eggs. Strip the plastic sheath off. This exposes the full length of the wire. Then clean it with a mild soap, like a dish soap, rinse it thoroughly, and sanitize it. Once you've got your piece of wire nice and sanitized, just stick it down in your fermentation vessel. If you've got a carboy or a dummy john like these and you're using a bung, you can just pop that in to hold everything in place. What I learned over the last several months is a whole heck of a lot about how glass is made. And I did that through talking to experts, internet research, and uh, building my own polariscope. Now the real meat and potatoes of this video and the thing that I didn't know I would learn so much about while investigating this topic is that of annealing. It is a critical part of glass manufacture that leads to the durability of a piece of glass. Basically what you do with a polariscope is you view polarized light coming through the glass. So your primary light source is polarized one way and your polarized filter is polarized another way. And looking at the glass through those different polarizations allows you to see things you can't see with the naked eye. This here is the Italian carboy. And as you can see, it kind of looks like the polariscope is not even doing anything. 
But then when you replace this beautiful and seemingly flawless Italian carboy with the one made in Mexico, suddenly it all becomes so clear. Just shell your tamarind, soak it in hot water for an hour, strain it off, and peel all the pulp off of the seeds and other fibrous material. Once you have the pulp off, you strain it through a sieve, so all you're left with is tamarind paste. It's kind of a brown, super sour paste. And you can dose your homebrew with a little bit of tamarind paste to add tartaric acid. Use your thumbnails, really make sure everything is down tight. We're gonna use this etching cream. It seems to be relatively easy to find. It's called Armor Etch. I'll put a link to that down in the description where you can support our channel. Move it around for three minutes, making sure to go in every direction, every angle I could. Let it sit for three minutes and then scrape off all the excess. This is reusable lots and lots of times. Remove the stencil and dry it off. Looky there. As you can see here, I was indeed able to get it to fluoresce under black light. You can see just that light little bit of green in the middle. Some of them were definitely more stark than others, but the fortunate thing is all this stuff is sterile, save for the yeast culture that's on it, so I felt okay scooping it all out and just chucking the whole thing in. Let's open it up, let's dim the lights, and let's see what we came up with. That is a glow-in-the-dark mead. It's transformed so much over the years. Every time I open a bottle, it tastes a little bit different. It's very tannic. Mm-hmm. 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 There's a lot of blueberry skins in there. Wow. Ooh, that's big. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, let me say. There's a lot going on. It's it's one of those, you know, sometimes you open a bottle and it shocks you on your first taste. I think over the years as the oak and the tannin have started to come more forward, mm -hmm. the sweetness has faded a yeah. lot. And I think that this was back sweetened. It wasn't back sweetened heavily. I think I maybe could have gone further. But it's one of those things where like the balance at the time was just right, you know? Yeah. And you, ha you there's no way to predict how that's gonna change four years later. No. I, but it is crazy complex. It is very complex. You're really taking this one in. Is it the moment? Is it the gravity of <laughs> four years of mead? It deserves some respect, Got you know? <laughs> because it's lingered for this long. I, and I, I like it. It is, the complexity is just so interesting considering it's just like a blueberry mm. mead. It's know? transformed a lot in the last year. I think the bottle I opened a year ago was much more berry forward. There was more of a blueberry, like mm. you pick up the blueberry in this. Mm -hmm. I feel like at this point it's changed to where the the tannin, the oak, and the honey mm -hmm. are Much more, more forward. Yeah, more forward. Because if you didn't tell me this was blueberry, I probably wouldn't even know. Yeah. I like if you were like, "Hey, here's a bottle of red wine," I'd be like, "Okay." <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> you know, great red wine. Yeah, you know, that is, is a good point. Um, I think more back sweetening would help bring out the honey character that would help itself identify as a mead yeah, a little bit more. Yeah, it's definitely a bit drier. Because right now, yeah, it's not it's not saying, hey, I'm mead. It's just kind of, like I said, a nice big deep red wine. Yeah. I think I'm ready to admit that this one has crossed the bell curve. Yeah. I think it may be on the decline at this point. When we talk about mead aging, a lot of people will say, oh no, it just the longer you age it, the, the better it gets, the better it gets. Yeah. And that's not, that's not true for one, but it's mm -hmm. definitely not been my experience. And something as big as this, it feels like about three years was when it, when it we're on the decline now. Mm. Cause it's the same for some wines as well. I think like mm -hmm. some, they're white wines where like you, you want to drink them much sooner, like mm -hmm. at the year or two mark, and then they start going down. Thank <laughs> you.
All right. I've never had an Addy Light before, so I don't know what. <laughs> Just really aggressively pouring. Yeah, I am. You gotta, you gotta really get that flavor going. It mm. tastes kind of like chlorine. Yeah, like it a, tastes a pool like pool water. water. Yeah. <laughs> Oh looky there! It's got the it's got the ingredients right there on the side. Does it include corn and raisins? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, there's not a lot to this. Like, and the I mean, this one I haven't tasted this one. They might be similar, but like that was one of the complaints with the Natty Light is it didn't taste like anything really. Uh -huh. All right. Whoa! That that this is what we made. Uh, <laughs> it's got yeah? some, it's got some flavor. DC, what do you think of this mead? You're really, you're really selling it. <laughs> so, <clears throat> the immediate, ooh, the immediate flavor is wood. Yes. Like not, not <laughs> tannin or no. oak, but oak spiral. <laughs> but well, almost like if you like grabbed like a cube of plywood and sucked on it. Get a couple oak uh, oak cubes and just kind of chew on it for a little bit. Like, so it's the type of thing where, you know, like, it's like bad medicine where when you go back for the second drink and you're a little bit like... <laughs> like, <laughs> like Robitussin. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. I won't puke. I can do this. Ah, it just tastes like wood. <laughs> we picked up seven oysters and these were very, very big. So I... I pared down my initial recipe estimate of 10 to seven because I didn't want to overwhelm this brew. Now enter our star ingredient, the oysters. I decided to go with crack because I spent a dollar each on these seven oysters and I felt like I wanted to get my money's worth. So at the 40 minute mark, we added the oysters to the boil trying to make sure we got every last glop. The flavor initially is sour. That transitions to kind of a salt, brine, malty, and almost kind of bitter coffee flavor. And as soon as you exhale, all of those rich, honey, toffee, caramel notes come out. It's really a hell of a thing. Oh, how metal is it? Yeah. So, you heard it here first, folks. I don't like it. No. No. <laughs> nope. <laughs> yeah. Listen, this was an experiment from the start. This is an experimental me. I don't know what to call this. This is an experiment in the glass, and uh, it came out interesting. I think I may be putting this one out to pasture. <laughs> I no, I mean I, I'll keep a I'll keep a bottle for next year. It's fun to see how it transforms, but it's a good learning experience. Yes, yeah, I think for so. Sure. I think in home brewing, a lot of times we get so excited about the things that we've made mm -hmm. that we share them. You know, like my peach mead. I've got I think seven bottles down there left. I've been sharing it left and right. Cause that's why you make it, right? You make yeah. it to to for others to enjoy. Mm -hmm. And we enjoy it so much that we don't have any left to age. Yeah. And I've been really committed to, to keeping a few bottles of this one around to, to experience that, but it does feel like... Smart. Maybe it's... Past the peak. It's gonna... <laughs> Maybe just a little bit. Just a little bit. I, and, and I say that because I feel like the the fruit character is, has faded mm -hmm. quite a bit. Definitely. Yeah. Interesting, but that happens with fruit wines. They say that with fruit wines, generally about two years is when you hit the peak of that bell curve. Very interesting. Do you have anything sitting back aging for many years? No. <laughs> no, I think really it's because I don't make mead in very large quantities. Mine mm -hmm. are mostly a little one gallon. So mm -hmm. if I have one bottle that sits for a year, <laughs> that's kind of, it but yeah. I, I have been thinking i should like start to reserve like two bottles and make like a two-year box you mm -hmm. know little step ups <laughs> no i think that's a great tip is to just like put them aside with intentionality so mm -hmm. i'm not gonna touch this because i want to see how that ages 
I did have three meads, I guess, hit the two year mark, mm -hmm. but they were my first meads that I like ever made. Were they were they fantastic at two years? No. Okay. They're <laughs> just as bad, if not you know, that's worse. <laughs> a lot of times, you know, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, mm -hmm. but a lot of times <laughs> age does not improve things at all. Yeah. And we were joking earlier, that I just don't let people try the bad stuff that I've made. But that stuff doesn't age well. It does not, it's not, there's not some magic wonder of the universe that turns a bad thing into a good thing. Yeah. Generally, my advice to folks is, if you want it to be good, get it as close to good before it goes in the bottle as you can. Yeah. And it's then true. age it. in your homebrew, cause all they do is make your brew taste like freaking raisins. Don't use raisins in your homebrew, they have more sulfites than bottles of government regulated commercial wine do. And now, the types of mead from around the world, brought to you by Yakko Warner. Acerglin, Bilbamel, Braggot, and Melamel, Methaglin, meet that has herbs. Sizer has apples, a Capscamel, Peppers, is spicy to drink, it takes nerves. Boche and Black Mead, Rotomel and Sack Mead, Hippocras is spicy grape brew. A Pyman's like wine with grapes off the vine, and Opcamel has grapes too. More at Mulberries for a mead that's got cherries, Sub Viking blood is its own thing. Grape Mead, Mold Mead, Cho Mead, Short Mead, Oxymel is vinegar, Zang. Has this mouthpiece been sanitized? Oh yeah. I, I sprayed my minty fresh. Oh uh, man, cleaner. I forgot about that stuff. Okay, give music teacher, give me some tips for it's just for finding my slow own raspberry. Sugar. But it's not a. It's not a. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> it's a hard lip situation. Mm -hmm. You're thinking a trumpet. Get your mind out of the okay. trumpet. Come on, man. Get your mind out of the trumpet, man. <laughs> close well i'm glad you were here to experience this with me too me. even even though it wasn't like a stunner at four years i promise you two years ago it was great <laughs> i still enjoy it that's, i mean it's good. i think it'd be good with like steak or something you know oh hopefully it's good with pizza since that's what we're eating tonight. oh hell yeah <laughs>